What's up guys, here with another video. I'm with my buddy Brian. There's Brian. This is Jenna. And over here we got Blake. All three of these people I have met through Instagram. I've actually uh, known Brian now for how long have we, how long have we been like chatting on Instagram? I'm gonna say like two years. Yeah, I wanna say it was like, like a year of like actual like friendly conversation, but probably like two years of like occasional DMs asking the question. Gear talk. Honestly, right? Like, hey, Always gear talk. Got this yeah. that camp? Yeah. And then it just evolved into like the whole Leica thing and like weekly conversations about like, dude, I might sell this Sony thing to get this. How do you like this lens versus this and that and whatever. We're kind of the same mentality of shooting right now. Yeah, we've definitely been on a similar journey because we both got into Leica around the same time. Yeah. Like and the same, remind me, same you, we both got the Q yeah, and then we got the Q. M digital and then yeah, it was then M film. Like so like we've been on the exact same trajectory. Brian shoots the M240, the Q, the original Q, yeah. and the M6. And if you've been following this channel, I'm currently shooting the M11 and I've got the uh, Q2 and the M6 as well. I'm gonna give Brian the M11 with the Sumalux. I'm gonna shoot his 240 with his 35 Sumacron. And which is like probably like the most tank of, any, of a lens ever made, right? I mean, it's like- Pretty much. Yeah. So like the Apple. 35. Right, I mean, you've thrown it against a tree and it's never broken, right? I mean, sure, yeah. yeah. You can just huck it in the P&W tree bark. Yeah, and it, I mean, yeah. right there, you can see where he, where, where he literally hit the lens against the tree. No, and uh, we're gonna kind of just compare experiences and then we're gonna take a look at the photos that we took with each other's gear. We're gonna get into it. Hanging out over here with Jenna and Blake, they're gonna watch us do this. Cause that's what your friends do in the P&W. They all come along and watch you make YouTube awkwardly. Cause it's awkward to, for me to hold this camera here with other people hanging out. That's why I do YouTube alone, guys, in my, in my room or on my own trips. All right, let's get on it. All right, you wanna just uh, work off of each other's SD cards? Uh, yeah, we can just drop box stuff later, right? Oh, oh you, yeah. don't have, you don't have any peak design clips. No. Come on, man. What, you, and you're a photographer? <laughs> Turn it on. Is it all, does- Oh, you want to, you gotta go to S. That's single shot. Okay, what is C? Con uh, like? Continuous, like you hold it down. And the other one is self timer, I think. Interesting. I've obviously never used a 240. I like the width though. Like it feels That's good. The video button, the silver one. Video, have you used it for video? I've done it once and never looked at the fit. That doesn't, yeah, it doesn't sound like it makes sense to be a video. How do you get this thing out of live view? Oh, uh, I hit the FN button. Yeah. Did you program it to that? Uh, nope. It's is like the default. FN, yeah, FN, FN is live view. It's live view or whatever you want it to be. It's programmable. Yeah, <clears throat> but I, I don't use live view unless I'm using the close focus. I mean, yeah, you have to do that. How does, yeah. how does that one work? Do I, do uh, I that that one doesn't have close focus. If oh, you want one that does, yeah, it's a 50. It's on would, it, would it have a hard stop? And it has a stop, plastic. yep, and then crank past it. Yep. Okay. That rock is sharp, is. right? Like, I can yeah. check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go that far on mine, dude, it's so bad. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll let Brian go first. Brian, what were your thoughts on shooting the M11 with the 35 Sumalux? It feels just like my 240 with a 35 Sumacron, other than the fact that I can go to 1.4 on the lens. And the screen on the M11 is heaps better. You can actually zoom in all the way to check sharpness. My camera, I can only get like one click of zoom. If you go all the way, it just, it kind of looks like blurry resolution mixed with maybe a sharper blurry result. Otherwise though, they feel the same. They're gonna shoot the same. They're pretty much the same camera. This just has higher shutter speeds, better ISO performance. Lenses are already very similar. His camera's slimmer than mine. Mine's a little thicker. Yeah, actually, I actually like, I'm a big hand. I'm, I'm loving the size it's, of this. It's pretty much the similar. It feels really good. But the screen is like huge. Like I don't check my shots on that because it's just so hard to tell. Mm -hmm. I just trust I'm good with the range finder and alignment. But if I had one of these, I would go in the screen after every shot and I'd be like, okay, things look good or don't look good. Kind of what I do on my Sony system. But with that camera, I just don't bother because the screen is like nine years old and it's not good. <laughs> Yeah, I I, uh, I really like the size of this. I kind of wish they were still this thick. <laughs> like this feels really nice. I got, I have no concern I'm gonna drop it at all. Whereas like even my M6 and this one and the, and the I think the M10 is a similar profile. This, this feels really nice. But yeah, I mean, obviously if you're watching this and you shoot M, they are all the same basically from the M4, I think. 
and on. Yeah, it's like the more. same, the same logic, the same experience, but this definitely, uh, it feels nice. I was telling Brian earlier, it feels like with the M240, Leica was trying to be all things to all people because they included video. Um, I actually put it on C to start, which is like burst mode, which I have that too, but I have to like dial in a setting to get that. Yeah, and yeah, I think I, I get what you're saying about the screen. I thought I was missing focus on everything. I don't like to think that I miss focus a lot. <laughs> Maybe I do, <laughs> but uh, then he told me not to sweat it because it was the screen. So I'm like, I got fingers crossed you that when we look at this. <laughs> Ryan's gonna send me a text later and be like, you really freaking suck. <laughs> Uh, rangefinder focus and this whole time i've been like man i'm zippy with rangefinder we actually had this conversation like a week ago i put it on c again dang it <laughs> you do that you ever what is, what keeps happening with me it's the way you probably hold it you probably like finger on the edge yeah i do right? yeah i i kind of carry yeah, it if you keep it on, on the, the edge then it'll catch the, the switch on that oh i see i see i always hold my finger like never on the top like i'm like you know, oh okay okay like yeah yeah Okay, I'm gonna put Brian on the 50 Sumalux with the close focus, cause have you ever tried the close focus before? I shot a lot of close focus um, at Mount Rainier recently. We gotta make it up there still. It's only like two and a half hours away. I know. If I lived here, I would be <laughs> all, all the time. I have seen people that are trying to like focus tab, close focus, and you can't do it. If you're trying to close focus and look at that screen and get it dialed in, it's nearly impossible because even the smallest, even breathing takes it out of focus. So what I do is what you were just doing. I typically will throw it into close focus as far as I can, and then just slowly back away with my finger on the shutter, just fire, fire, fire until I'm, you know, when I see it light up. I will say though, like focus peaking, I don't, I, I'm not a fan of the focus peaking. I feel like it's not actually very accurate, even on the M11. Sometimes it tells me something's in focus and then I go back and look and it wasn't actually in focus. Yeah, the focus peak is like it, barely- Yeah, like, and I've got it like- Is it maxed out on high? Yep. I like don't get any, I like barely get the edge of that. I guess the very tip of the leaf is in focus. Yeah. Which is what I would aim for anyways. So pro tip. If you use the Sumalux, you're thinking about getting a close focus Sumalux, 1.4 you would think would be the best look to close focus. Try like F4 instead. Everything's sharper. You still get a ton of background separation because you're so close. But uh, yeah, F4, that's a sweet spot. If you were telling someone that came to you and said, hey, should I get the Leica M11? Or is it okay to get something like the M240 or the M9, M8, M10, anything else? After using the M11, what would you say? If you don't need like a really good rear, like rear screen, and I don't know how like the M10 might work, but if you don't like depend on a screen, I would just be like, if you want the rangefinder experience, want to use like an M mount lens, I would just go for like a 240 or an M10. But like if a screen is really important to you and you use live view and stuff like that, then I'd probably opt for like the M11 or I don't know how the screen might compare on like the M10, but probably one of those two, because that screen and this screen, like- Generations apart. Huge. Then that'd be the main thing, really. Like if I was looking at these cameras, like megapixels, sensors, stuff like that aside, like actual things you use when you're shooting, the screen would be like a major, major yeah. thing to like contemplate mm -hmm. about, depending on your shooting style. And I would say most people get into Leica for the experience. That's and the experience we're having is like identical. It's the same experience. So if you're in the market for Leica, don't be afraid to go with an older one. I have a, I have several videos about my gear journey because I've now had the 11, the 10R, the 10. I still have the 10R getting repaired right now. And I've shared, you can link above and you can see kind of why what I'm doing with the 11. And jury's still out on whether it's a catch and release or if I'm going to sell the M10R. But I'm, I've got a video about that coming soon. So just keep your eye on the channel. Be sure to follow Blake. Blake, turn this thing around. Turn this thing around. Come on. Be sure to follow this guy. Give me a thumbs up for Blake because uh, he was our he was our camera guy and he didn't come here to be the camera guy, but he ended up by default being the camera guy. God, for so Thanks, Jenna, for telling us all of your movie trivia. Oh, if yeah. um if you need to know again, uh, Harry Potter I guess is the ultimate answer. And then Brian, be sure to follow Brian. P and W photographer extraordinaire knows all the waterfalls are. Yep. So uh, this guy, this is the I'm guy right here. Master. Check out his Instagram. Oh, I'm talking behind the mic. None of this is gonna be there. Huh. Check out his Instagram and you'll see all the waterfalls. So be sure to follow these guys. I'll say it on the front of the mic. Be sure to follow these guys, <laughs> and I'll see you next time. How are you doing? Great. What are your top three favorite movies? Um, Harry
Potter. Uh, which one? For all of them. Oh, Did all you see of Dumbledore them. dying? Oh, yes, I oh was my God. so sad. I got a text from like 10 people. We're, we've been rewatching them and now we're gonna have to start over from oh. the beginning and make our way through. Um, and then I am a big Breakfast at Tiffany's fan. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Classic, classic. Uh -huh. I just love some Audrey Hepburn. She's yeah. great. And I would say my third, Love Actually maybe? Love Actually? Yeah. I've never heard anyone I got on their top three, but good for you. Good for you. It's a great movie. I watch it every holiday season. I love rom coms. Like, too. I watched it like it was a like a. I do it with my mom every year, so during the holidays, so it's kind of got like some sentimental value to it. Yeah. Okay. In the name of Dumbledore, who is now dead, follow Jenna below. R.I.P. Dumbledore. This shot's for you.